It's Norm from Tested here at GDC 2015. I'm sitting with Richard Marks. Uh, you're the director of PlayStation's R&D, basically in charge of running Project Morpheus. No, not in charge of running it, but, but I, you, I help you're, out. You're part of that team. Uh, we just got the demo. Uh, you guys have new hardware this year. It was a surprise announcement last year. And at the press conference, you announced 120 hertz, a different screen. Let's talk about all that stuff, because sure. there's big, two big components, right? Uh, hardware and software, right. and at PlayStation, you're integrated on both of those. On the hardware size, it's a new screen. Um, it's LCD 1080p panel. OLED. OLED, OLED panel. Yeah. And the, the sub-pixel arrangement on the panel is important to you guys. Can you talk about that? Right, so a lot of screens have uh, different numbers of sub-pixels, and we have three sub-pixels per pixel. So there's an R, a G, and a B for every pixel. And that that's, you know, makes it so that you get a higher fidelity image. Mm. And then with the optics you guys are using, does that reduce, for example, like a screen door type effect? Yeah, our optics guys are really good at uh, Sony, and they, they've done a really good job at making the uh, panel, which is you know very small, getting blown up to a 100 degree field of view, still look quite nice. Now, 100 degree field of view is what the current prototype is. Is that what you're targeting? Is that what you feel like it's comfortable for yeah, VR? Yeah, it's, it's approximately 100 degrees, so that's what we're targeting for our... Um, our consumer. You, is that what you feel like is a limitation of, for example, the panel size or the optics? Um, I think we just think that's a really good match for uh, the screen that we can, we're using and, the, and what you can um, do with the optics and get a good weight and everything. All those things together, that's what we feel is the best. Mm -hmm. best um, there's also obviously positional tracking because you have the, the eye camera and you have more tracking leads on this. Mm -hmm. uh, what's right. changed in terms of tracking accuracy and, and, and from last year? Well, so the, the main one is, you can see the, the, the one that is obvious is the one in the front, and that's perpendicular to the camera, you know, so when you're faced on, you get the very best image of that one LED, so you get a really nice, solid LED. And then the side ones are really important. As you turn sideways, you know, some of the LEDs start to be occluded and other ones appear, and you're having a good handoff so you don't suddenly just switch over in a new set makes a lot smoother tracking experience. Because you want 360 and demos we tried, we were yeah. spinning around. Now it is going to be a corded experience, right. so it's right. plugging via HDMI. Right. Uh, PlayStation 4 is HDMI 1.4, so that gets mm -hmm. your 120 hertz at the 1080. 120 hertz seems to be the, the big thing, the, yeah. the new bar you guys are raising. Right. How are you accomplishing that for games and for developers? Cause many right. games don't even render it. Yeah. It's funny, there's a talk going on right now about this one of our sponsored sessions, but there's, um, there's a, several different ways you can do it. So, you know, the ideal is if a game can actually render at 120 hertz and you can have uh, a new image every time, then you get a really smooth, and one of the demos we had did that. Uh, but if your game, say, is at 60 frames per second, then we, have some, we use something called reprojection in the system software that will take your image and then it'll sample the sensors again and then move your image and kind of fill in the fr in the between frame between this frame and the you know next 60 hertz frame to make a 120 hertz output and so that gives a more smooth experience based on the sensor data it's not exactly the same frame is it it's, it's not exactly it? it's been adjusted it's and it you I mean it, conceptually you could think of it shifting based on yeah, your head motion mm -hmm. but actually it's more than a shift it's a, a full rotation so kind of a, a warping yeah it, do you know that's orientation or is that taking a, a, it, a it's position a, as well it's it's orientation by the the standard way the system software works mm, okay and you're obviously sampling at much higher frequency right this, uh, for the for the your motion sensing right um now, for games that run at 60 hertz, for example, is that the 60 hertz is the only time you can double that? If games run at 30 frames per second, can that slowly double? Yeah, yeah, we're really in encouraging that, and, you know, we haven't set any hard, you know, out, uh, limits yet, but we're really encouraging 60 hertz right. for these experiences. Do you feel that's going to change Middle. how developers develop their games? Or I, I don't think so. I think a lot of developers understand this when they've been making things for VR, that it, the experience is a lot better when you have at least 60 frames per second output. So you imagine developers making games specifically for VR? And, and, and I, we, we think that's the best experience. And some people are, you know, maybe will make their game and have a VR component mm. on the disc or something like that. And, uh, or maybe, you know, they'll take their world that they've already been using for one kind of traditional game and they'll bring that world and create a VR experience in, in that world. Something I thought you guys did well was also display the image on the TV, right. unwarped. Mm -hmm. Is that being rendered twice, or how, how? I mean, it seems like a lot of rendering if you're doing a split image here with um, the 3D and then also on the screen. Now, what we have in part as part of the system is uh, we call it the PU, uh, and it it's a box that 
takes the output from the PlayStation 4 and it splits it. It splits it into something for the headset and then something for the television. Mm -hmm. And it does this conversion of the 120 hertz output of PS4 down to something that a TV can display. Got and it, it does a, you know, the warp. -warp but it would need to be the same image. Right, so not no asynchronous style. Yeah, that's what we, we you know that lets you the people in the room that are there see see what you're seeing, the person inside is seeing, so you can kind of share the experience that way. Wow, what's next for? Uh, I mean, at this state of the prototype, what what are the things you want? What next milestones you want to hit? Well, this is pretty much you know what we think we're going to go with the, the the kind of core of the system is what we're we've shown. Um, there's still a few minor tweaks that we're working on, and we have to go through the mass production process. So mm -hmm. that, thing is, but it's on a real kind of product kind of path now. It, it seems like a really great system, and we'll see more games hopefully at E3, and you guys announce uh, release next year, quarter, before quarter two. Yeah, what we're showing here, ex experience-wise, is more of uh, something that shows off the system and shows different aspects of VR. So you have kind of like uh, the heist demo where it's you know very um, interactive with a character at first, and then a lot of environmental interaction. And then we had um, kind of the, the controller was that true 120 hertz mm -hmm. demo yeah. I was talking about, and that shows the controller rendered in VR. So you look down, and when you push a button, you see it being pressed on the controller. And then the last one, that little um, um, kind of diorama room where you, it just shows that just seeing small things in VR really close up to you is a very powerful feeling. So. We were trying to more show a breadth of experience than, and then, yeah, E3, you'll see games. It's very exciting. Thank you so much, Richard, sure. for speaking with us at GDC. We'll have more stuff on test.com. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, my God. Uh, I think good. Sony Morpheus, uh, much better this year than last year. I mean, last year was good. Last, last year, year was a good experience. E3 last year was a good experience. I feel like that the the London Heist de demo is a real fulfillment of the promise of storytelling in VR. So like, we did three demos total, and let's let's right. explain what each of the demos what they showed. Yeah. Um, so the first demo that both you and I tried was the London Heist. Now mm -hmm. remember, Sony Morpheus last year was the first VR experience where we remember the summary we the diving one. We were yeah. standing. We could look at our feet. This one we did sitting and standing with move controllers. Now the first half of the demo we were sitting. And it was more about like spatial audio, where cues, video a guy looking to the right, we would actually follow him to, to look at the door, mm -hmm. um, you know, the ceiling would shake, and then picking up the cell phone. But at the same time, they were using that to do some real storytelling. The guy said, hey, you dare look me in the eye when you looked at him, in, when you looked at his face. Mm -hmm. um, he, there was threatening gestures, he was, you moved back, the camera moved back. They, clearly they were taking advantage of the chair sitting and like you said, the spatial the, the spatial audio was really good. It was it was a that, that part was very effective just by itself. And then well, the, he handed you the cell phone. Right, you pick up the cell phone. Now, did you know that when you pick up the cell phone, I picked it up with one hand. I put it to my ear, which you can hear it. Then uh -huh. and then I transfer it to my other ear. Did and you do it that? Worked. But did you did you switch hands? So yeah. the way the control the way the move controllers work is pulling the trigger basically let you grip. So yeah. very rudimentary hand controls. But you, you would grab the cell phone from the from the other character, hold up your ear. Did, it, did the sound move? Sound move. Yes, totally yeah, moved. Awesome. It was like I was holding a cell phone, you know, with the move controller. Mm -hmm. And then the second half of that demo. One, one other thing is it looked like they had a headphone jack on the actual Morpheus now, yeah. rather than having to have two cables running. Um, I, I didn't actually, did you, did you notice? I didn't notice. I didn't notice two wires, though, mm -hmm. so. One long cable. One long cable, yeah. So the second half of that mm -hmm. demo, um, it's kind of the flashback moment. And you had have more interactions. You're using the move controllers to open drawers, puzzle solving. Basically, so you're, you're in a room. You're behind a big desk. Um, there's a bunch of drawers. You basically have to rifle through the drawers, and you want to look for maybe flashlight, guns, a key. Uh, you pick some stuff up, and then stuff starts happening. Yeah, I like that the flashlight they use was like the stick flashlight. Mm -hmm. So it actually matched what the move controllers. So you actually. Pushing it around. It was like a Vietnam era a GI flashlight, basically. You could, uh, there was some physics involved, so I could like toss the flashlight. I found a gem in one of the cabinets, mm -hmm. I could throw that. You could pile things up on top of each other. Um, so there was, it was very physics y. Eventually, you find a gun, some magazines, or clips, I guess, and a jewel. When you pick up the jewel, a lot of alarms go off. Somebody in your ear starts screaming, and all of a sudden, you're getting shot at. And basically, you have to duck down behind the desk. At this point, you're standing. Yeah. So you physically duck down under the desk, and you peep up to, to see the guard shooting at you. And then 
unlike every other shooting game I've ever played, you're actually using the move controller to aim the gun in, in three axes. Right, so you could do the kill shot and reloading. That was the coolest thing. Yeah. Um, when you ran out, of cl ran out of bullets, you have to pick up with the move controller mm -hmm. another clip, which I guess kind of feel, feels like a move controller, and tap them, and that would... You just kind of get them close. It the wasn't, reload animation. You didn't have to line anything up or anything like that. But it was, it was mimicking the motion that you go through if you're actually reloading a gun quickly. Um, knowing that you're mechanically able to do it without really having to think too much. It was really, like that was a really satisfying experience. And actually, I, th I had really good luck shooting and aiming. You could pass the gun back and forth to get left-handed shots, right-handed shots. Like that was an incredibly satisfying experience. I would like to go play more right now. Right, it's like one of those things where you, you don't realize aiming a gun wildly is not a great thing. I mean, right. there's a lot of assistance when you play with a gamepad and a mouse is precision accurate, but without any cursor without any crosshair system, mm -hmm. you have to look down the site or fire a few shots. But that was, I was actually looking down the site and had really good luck with that. Like I was able to pick off guys from across the room. Um, now from actual, what you, the encounter standpoint, it's just your standard, you know, duck, hu duck hunt style dude Hogan's hunting around the table. Please. Exactly. But with the actual VR experience and crouching behind a table. Well, and you could shooting. duck out from the side, you could duck out from the top. The desk was getting eaten up by the fire you were getting from the other guards. And with spatial audio, that stuff, it just felt way more immersive. And it's important to note, you could, you, the audio cues, so they're doing their own 3D audio stuff now. Um, that's new, they, it seems like they developed it in-house, they didn't buy anyone, they said. Uh, and, and you were getting cues from above, fr front, front center, right, left, and you knew where to look without having to kind of, yeah. like there was no searching. I just, my brain knew because my ears knew. Now the games will have to be designed so that you're not encouraged to move too wildly in that space. I hit up against the wall at yeah. the end, literally back up against the wall. And you talk about, maybe it's interesting because you have a camera at you. If they did some type of structural like room There's no mapping, reason, yeah, there's no there's reason no they can't reason. map the room. Right, so when you reach the boundaries, they can show you an outline of what they think your room is, so you know you're getting close. Or just nudge you, you know, give you a little software nudge to step forward. Um, interesting things to note, this was a 60 hertz game that they, I can't remember what the word, they, they use, a, they have a term. They, they double the frame rate to 100. Projection? Well, it's not, it's basically, it's high, uh, warping, yeah. which is what Oculus calls it, the asynchronous time warp. Uh, but the warping here isn't positional, it's just orientation. Basically, they're taking the frame that's getting rendered, and then with a separate system, um, ca taking into account the head orientation movement at the end of the render, and then adding another frame. So, in. how did you think this game looked like, I'm really curious about the PlayStation 4's ability to render anything that's even remotely looks like a, a current generation game at 120 frames per second. It didn't look like this developer, whoever made this demo, had to it tone down Sony the London, graphics um, for this demo specifically. It doesn't look as good as something like The Order, um, which is, I think, probably the best looking console game I've ever seen at this point. Um, but, but it, but it is... And you don't want to do that kind of weird depth of field thing right. anyway in right. VR. But it, I mean, it does look. It did look. It did look like a triple A, yeah. reasonably current game, um, and the frame rate was nice and solid. Like now, when a game actually is rendered at 120 hertz, mm -hmm. at, for example, in demo use where you're moving the controller, that is silky smooth. Um, yeah, I was doing all sorts of crazy head movements and trying to move as quickly as I could side to side. I was really pleasantly surprised by how well the headset stays on. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know, the, it's still using the same basic design as last year but it's a little more squinched in on the, on your head. You can kind of position it how you want. It pulls the glasses up. They're not actually, the weight isn't on the front of your head, it's on the back, kind it's of a, around a halo. ring. Yeah. It's like you're wearing a crown as opposed to goggles, so it's not on your nose, And even it's around the top of your head. And even shaking my head crazy left and right, I didn't have any kind of wobble on the, on the glasses. I thought the 120 hertz was good. I didn't think it was noticeably, it was a little bit less noisy than the 60 hertz demos that we saw. When you had a lot of movement on the 60 hertz, you kind of picked up, it was almost like edge, aliased edges, stuff like that. Um, at 120 hertz, that was much less evident. OLED panel looks good. Mm -hmm. 1080p is what it is. Did you see screen door? I definitely saw screen door. Yeah. Um, 100 degree field of view. I know some VR enthusiasts want 120, but working within the hardware limitations of the PlayStation 4, this is what makes sense. If you have too much field of view, you're rendering a lot of wasted space. And I thought, I thought it's, I haven't used the Oculus lately. It seems like their vertical field of view was equivalent to, or maybe even better than 
the Oculus, like you had a taller picture, it's still you still have the kind of uh, sw dive mask effect of yeah. hey, there's stuff on either side. But it wasn't it wasn't uh, offensive. I didn't find it bad at all. Um, I thought that these were the most polished demos I've seen for VR to date. And that's what we'll see more from Sony between now and the release next year. Better gameplay they, demos, actual games being worked on. Can't wait for E3. But so much more to see in GDC. It's coming. It's coming it's, before before Q2 next year. Q2 next year. Oh, I'm so excited. We don't know what price is, but we'll keep you informed as soon as we find out. Uh, find more stuff on Tested. More VR stuff. More stuff from GDC 2015. So, well, I'm Norm. I'll see you next Bye, time. Guys. Bye.